Welcome back to the Mega Guac Masterclass. This week, I'm joined by Jason Nervaez, who is a visual artist, and we're going to talk a little bit about visual art for the purpose of content creation and promotion. So welcome, Jason, and um, I'm just going to have you start by um, talking a little bit about what you do. I work in animation, um, and uh, I currently work mostly on Yu-Gi-Oh, handling post-production work. Um, uh, to kind of uh, give you a, a quick summary or to simplify it as much as possible, um, we I, I'm one of the guys that basically will take will replace all the Japanese signs with the English signs, um, or just remove any kind of writing in the background whatsoever. My department we handle um, any BSMP, which is broadcast standards and practices, um, any issues they may have, um, and uh, we kind of just fix stuff up, so lengthen skirts or, or fix a blouse or uh, anything along those lines. Gotcha. What would you necessarily say that your uh, style is? That's a, I guess that's different from like my, ma my main job style is, would be to be as invisible as possible, really, gotcha. um, with everything with, for Yu-Gi-Oh specifically. But um, what, I, what I've also done uh, and, and continue to do from time to time are street storyboards, sometimes illustrative work. Sometimes I'll actually have to do some drawings for Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, whereas like a kid will have a sign or have a piece of paper that have writing on it. Sometimes I just need to replace it with a drawing. And I'm the person that'll be in, from our department that'll do those drawings. Um, and in that case, my style is just to basically make it as blend in with the rest of the animation. Formless or styleless is, is you know, one way to kind of put it. So it's just basically, a, I, I've gotten pretty good over the past. I've been in the industry now, God, like 18 years. Um, I've gotten pretty good at adapting and changing my style to suit whatever the job entails. For instance, when I worked on the Ninja Turtles, it's really just about making sure the motion is showing. Uh, yeah, basically whatever the job needs, this is what I'll, I'll adjust to uh, my style to. That's one of the things I guess about being, uh, one of the big changes from before I was a professional to becoming a professional was being able to to change to adapt my style and to to do things very quickly and to not wait for inspiration to to have to draw something speaking about your inspirations you've been in the field for 18 years so before yeah. that what really inspired you to become a uh, artist probably comic books i guess are the biggest uh the biggest reasons um i was a big comic book fan since early on maybe even as early as like eight or nine but not ser seriously started reading maybe around the age of 11 or 12 uh, maybe even a little earlier it's all kind of fuzzy but uh but it was comic books everything from comic books to to movies cartoons when they were on you know back in in my day we only had them on saturday mornings for the most part uh sometimes uh, after school for for about an hour or so so all that stuff inspired me you have an overall goal what makes you want to like get up every single day and like do this like obviously yeah. you have a passion but um... yeah yeah it's interesting you say that because my your your goals and and your your inspirations obviously should change mm -hmm. um, or, or age with you or change with you as, as your age. Um, and yeah, they have changed. The goalposts have changed. Um, I'm still inspired and always have been by, by great art, great artwork. Uh, you know, back in my youth, it was comic books. And then uh, I remember working at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I worked there for about five years rolling posters, but, uh, you know, becoming inspired by the artwork I would see there, I would say it's very real. It's not something I'm just kind of saying. It, it was a real thing. Being inspired by impressionists, and, and my artwork was nothing like that. I didn't do any kind of paintings at that point in my year, in my, in my life. Um, and, but I was very much inspired by that, by, by other paintings, by Dali, by Magritte, um, by all the classic, classic artists. Mm. Uh, and, and, and that's still, you know, it, it, and even film inspires me because I've been in animation and because I would love to work in film, actually. Um, you know, I, I've worked in, technically in, in a couple of movies, but those are Yu-Gi-Oh movies, really. Um, right. And, uh, you know, I've worked on, on 
several different shows, animated shows, um, from the, the Ninja Turtles to um, Young Justice to the, the Hulk, Hulk and Agents of Smash and Spider-Man. But um, all of those things, the, the other artists inspire me. A anything that's really great artwork, I would say, was always inspired me. Um, that's great. Yeah. And, and, and when I say film also, it's like everything from the Avengers movies to, to independent films to foreign yeah. films. Um, one of my favorite movies of all time is Seven Samurai. Um, and so all of those things, they, they still continue to inspire me for sure. Um, and for goals, you know, I do have, uh, you know, it's very easy once you kind of break into the industry to kind of just uh, kind of fall into your, your daily routine. Um, and kind of lose sight of, of where you want to go. Cause you're so happy what you're doing. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, it should change. You should still have, have goals. And, um, some of my goals include, you know, working on, working on film. Like I said, that's still something I've always wanted to do. Um, and now that my children are a bit older, uh, that kind of stuff will start, uh, those kind of opportunities start kind of opening up mm. a little bit more in terms of time. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad, I'm happy to say that, that I still do continue to be inspired by art every day and that I do, there's still a, quite a few things I'd still like to do, hopefully. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing what you, you accomplish. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I guess moving on to part two, I just want to touch upon your professional work. So, um, at the moment, where are you working? I'm currently working for uh, Konami Cross Media. Um, working on Yu-Gi-Oh shows and um, uh, sometimes Yu-Gi-Oh commercials. It's usually most of it is Yu-Gi-Oh based, um, but uh, I, I I can actually say it now because I worked on it was a, a Contra video game. I didn't work on the game itself, but worked on um, the uh, kind of uh, chapter breaks in between the the video game uh, mm. the story story breaks. So I worked on that a motion comic for that. Um, I was one of the directors on that and, uh, and that was fun. That was a lot of fun Big experience, a lot of work, great experience though. Um, so I work on whatever projects they, they need me to work on. Um, but for, for the most part, most of the work I do is on Yu-Gi-Oh. Cool. And generally, um, are you under contract or are you getting paid hourly? You know, just explain yeah. a little bit what's going yeah, on yeah. with that. It's, it's an annual salary. Um, uh, I, I'm one of the lucky ones uh, in terms of mo most artists, or not most, but many artists work. Uh, there's a lot, tons of freelance artists. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of them are freelance, both in animation and in um, comic books. I have friends in the comic book field and in animation field, mostly. Um, there's a lot of freelancers out there. Uh, I've been lucky to have been employed thus far, not for Micah here. Um, <laughs> For, for the past 18 years. Um, and yeah, the, usually those are your options. Uh, usually you work for a studio. Um, uh, and, you know, if you're lucky, you get to work in house. And when I say lucky, I mean, you, you basically get uh, benefits and, and those kind of things, which are fantastic to have, especially if you're older, have family. Um, but uh, I know I, I have friends that are contractors that are perfectly happy and, and it's their preferred method of, of working. Uh, they, they like being freelancers and they prefer doing that. Because um, just they, they have a complete, totally free to choose to do whatever they want, whenever they want as the opportunities arise. So um, yeah, that's it. And how are you, if you were looking for a job, um, how would you normally apply? Like I know you have to submit a portfolio and um, if you could just go into that a little bit. Yeah, uh, I guess it's it would be different for someone trying to break in as opposed to someone that's established. Mm -hmm. um, different in the sense of if you're trying to break in, you need to to make that initial contact, uh, which is probably one of the harder. Uh, you know, nowadays it may not be as hard because of social media. You can actually make direct contact with with studios and with companies pretty easily. Mm -hmm. At least somebody there, um, even if it's just their social media person. It's assigned to it, but you know, I, I, it's weird. I don't know if the kids today have it easier or harder uh, breaking in. I, like a big part of me wants to say it's much easier because you do you can make contact a lot easier. Um, it used to be you ha you would have to make phone calls, hope somebody picks up, and if they pick up, hopefully 
you have to hope they don't hang up on you. Right. Um, and then you have to hope that they'll find some kind of time to see you. Uh, and, and then you'd have to mail in your portfolio or bring it with you if you happen to make an appointment um, to see them. Um, whereas today, everything's digital and it's much easier to transfer work. And I say it's harder because I would say that the competition is probably uh, much larger uh, than it was. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, it's much, much larger. Okay. Um, and so there's a lot of competition. Um, but, uh, but I think in general, Overall, uh, getting your work seen is much easier now than, than it ever was. I agree. Um, yep. Yeah. I don't right. know if I answered your question or not. No, you did. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Okay. Um, All right. And um, I think my last question for this section is um, how has COVID and uh, the quarantine affected how you work, how you're re working remotely? If you mm -hmm. just go into that a little bit. Yeah, sure. Um, previous to COVID, um, before COVID, I did go into the office every day. Mm. Um, and, uh, and my company specifically is very much, uh, they preferred people to be in the office, mm. uh, to work from the office. And that was fine. I mean, I worked, uh, my office is in the city. Um, I, I live in New Jersey now. And, uh, and it's weird because I, I love, I absolutely love the neighborhood we live in and I love this area. And, and growing up as, as a kid from the Bronx, a New Yorker, you know, you hear about moving to Jersey and you're like, oh no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> no, not me, not me living in Jersey. You're kidding me. But I absolutely love this neighborhood. I love this area. Um, and I love working in the city. I miss the city a, a whole lot. I mean, I grew up in the city, um, lived there most of my life. And, uh, but for the past year, um, I've been working from home. Um, we have remote setups. We have our VPNs all set up. We have our, our system going. Um, where we uh, basically log in so we can log into our computers in the office because they're very powerful and they were yeah. fairly new. I think we only got them a couple of years ago. So they're very powerful, uh, really good computers because we have a lot of rendering. We work with a lot of video. Um, so it's just like we're working, like our, those computers are here. Uh, so we have a good, nice, smooth setup for the most part. You know, there's always, there's always technical hiccups. Definitely. But, um, yeah, so that's just, just, just part of the game. Um, but it, so it's, it's impacted in that, you know, I have to, uh, just get my, my self, uh, into my seat right here and just work from here. Um, does that make it easier or harder? I, I guess it makes it easier. I mean, it's, you know, I, as I said, I love where I live. I loved where I worked. It was the commute part that sucked, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that part I don't look forward to again, but, mm. uh, but I do, I do look forward to getting back in the city, but as I don't have to worry about a commute right now. Um, and uh, it works like it is, it works fine, but I do look forward to getting, going back into the city. Uh, maybe, maybe not full time um, in the city, but, mm. uh, but we'll see. I have no idea what's going to end up happening. Yeah. I guess we'll have to find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah we got to wait. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to move on to part three and just sure. talk a little bit, a little bit about um, the equipment you use and how you you produce your art. So I guess start with um, physical hardware. You just tell me a little bit sure. about what you use. Well, um, I just use a computer. Um, I don't. It doesn't matter if it's a laptop or a desktop. I happen to work from both. Mm -hmm. um, I have both available to me here. Um, I have uh, for the drawing aspect, for the drawing part, I have a Cintiq setup. Uh, Cintiqs are, is the company, no, Wacom, Wacom is the company uh, that makes the Cintiqs. Cintiqs are a, a line. Um, they're basically monitors that you can draw on directly. I use, uh, this is the pen I actually use. I'll put it up to this. Pen I use for the, for the monitor. I'll show you the, the monitor here. Ugh. Sorry for the mess. But this is it here. Basically work on this. There's some shortcut keys over here. Um, my camera is really attached to, uh, to where it's at, so I can't <laughs> swivel it around. Um, but I just draw directly on that. Uh, as for software, I would say uh, 80, at least 80 or 90% of the software I use for drawing anyway is Photoshop. But I also use uh, um, an app called uh, Clip Studio Pro or Clip Studio Draw. Um, which is fantastic, I think. I think it's fantastic. Um, it allows you to kind of sets up uh, perspective lines that you can draw with um, 
and that that alone is is, is a game changer. Um, but those are the two main things. I, I use some other software for drawing occasionally, like Illustrator, but uh, for the most part, it's it's Photoshop and Clip Studio. Um, and drawing digitally, I mean, I've been drawing digitally um, on and off since uh, 2007, I guess, is when I started, really. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm quite used to it by now, obviously. But uh, I think anybody, any artist that, that likes to draw, um, if they had a Cintiq in front of them, especially, and that's what makes Cintiq so good. Um, the pressure sensitive sensitivity is really is good enough where it's like I, I think you you can get a hang of it inside of a day, honestly. Um, and then you'll kind of realize this, some of the benefits of it. Um, and I just worked exclusively digitally until 2016 or 2017. Um, where I just bought a sketchbook so that I can start I, I basically told myself I wanted to stop playing video games on during my commute as much uh because i just felt like kind of zoned out and then i mm -hmm. um felt i wanted to kind of uh, do a little bit more with my commute and and actually it was one of the best things i could have done for myself so i just got a sketchbook um so i do draw again on paper using a paper and a real pencil and a pen um and that's been fantastic for for me for many different reasons but i feel my artwork has just gotten a lot better since i've done that because you get into the the practice of just of literally sketching and drawing for yourself like work drawings are very different than just drawing or sketching loosely for yourself either as an exercise or just for the hell of it because it's fun um it's a very different exercise um and uh, and i've gotten a lot better for it i'm, I'm really pleased that i did um yeah i guess we'll just move on to the next part so i just want to talk about your um like the process, I guess you can call it like your editing process. So if you just take me from start to finish, um, generally like what happens, like the first step you take and to the last step you take for, um, I guess like uh, when you're drawing. Yeah, I mean, I'll share, I'll share my screen with you. I'll just show you sure. a typical drawing. Um, so, great. All right, we're showing that. This is um, Clip Studio Draw. Paint, Clip Studio Paint, I think that's what it's called. Um, and I would say, unless you're like uh, one of these rare prodigy geniuses, um, I would say uh, a typical artist will work where it's uh, they're working as a, a rough sketch. They're working from a rough sketch. Mm -hmm. um, so let's just say, I don't even know what I'm drawing, honestly. I'm just kind of... <laughs> So you kind of work roughly. Yeah, you do a little rough drawing. I hope my chewing, you don't hear me. Oh, no, I don't. You're good. Okay, good. Thank <laughs> God. I, I should have asked that early on. <laughs> I, happen, I, I don't chew gum that much because I'm, I'm in the house now. But when I was commuting, I did. But I happen to have some gum right now. Um, if my drawing starts to look like, you know, it's not can't quite make out what's happening is because I haven't decided what I want to show <laughs> or what I what I want to draw actually um, I don't even have a picture in my head so like typically um, the way it is for me anyway uh, my drawings come out uh, there's a couple of different ways one is I actually get the image in my head of what exactly I want to draw um, and then drawing comes out it's a lot easier that way Mm -hmm. um but that does that isn't always the case i would say most of the time you kind of got to find it um and right now i, I really had no idea what, what i really <laughs> felt like drawing so we're going to figure it out um I, I think i've got an idea here so your typical drawing will start off as a, as a quick rough um i realized that i'm changing things up a little bit because i know spider-man here is uh is thin tends to be a very thin character you can go with a buff so, spider-man cool. <laughs> but yeah. then he won't be spider-man like, that's the <laughs> thing he won't be spider-man at that point i'll just draw the hulk or superman or <laughs> um but spider-man you know you gotta you gotta you gotta know the character or have some idea of the character uh, it helps it helps like i said sometimes you're just kind of trying to discover it as you go um so I'll basically just start off as a rough and this kind of happens this is the same thing if i was drawing with natural media uh, with a, a pencil, I would just be drawing this stuff very, very lightly. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'll do that with a pencil. 
And here I can separate things by layers. Is it very similar to Photoshop? Definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's very yeah. similar. You know, I'm I'm sure they probably got the basic idea for the engine from Photoshop mm -hmm. um, because there's a lot of similar things. There are uh, layer styles like multiply and screen and all that stuff, so same exact way as, as it works in Photoshop. Um, but then, like I said, it has other tools. But um, you know, so with natural media, what I would do is then I would just take a pen or a brush. And uh, yeah, I'm flubbing the lines here, but um, you know, this is basically the point where I haven't used this program in a while, actually. <laughs> um, this is where you basically would normally do your, your better lines, but these are actually horrible. Um, better than I could do. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. My God, this is really coming up. Man. That's one of the things I would say you gotta get really used to digitally is, um, you know, you might try to make these perfect lines mm. uh, and like it and digitally, I tend I find I actually have to work faster. You got to use faster lines so you can get the smoother lines. Right. But you, the great thing is that you can do stuff like this um, and either just, uh, you know, erase that. Whereas, you know, with natural media, you're not, you're not going to be erasing ink. No, uh, you probably just put white ink over it or whatever. Um, but this is basically just kind of shows the idea where there's there's a sketch underneath, and then there's a final drawing over it, which is that that's basically the point here, to kind of show. And um, do you usually um, are there usually like pre-made textures that you're given, or do you uh, you just have to draw all of that? Uh, basically you just have to kind of just, you know, it all depends on what it is. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, with Yu-Gi-Oh, like I said, we, one of the things we do is re, is replace signs. So in that case, you know, I could just take a shape and whoops, uh, that's not it. Uh, <laughs> it's been a while since I've used this app, obviously. Um, there's a shape thing around here somewhere. Uh, let's see if I can find it. But no, it's basically you just take, you make a square, right? So I'm just going to use the pencils here. <laughs> Whoops. And of course, I can't do it. But anyway, you make a square, and then you, you do whatever kind of sign you have to do in there, or whatever drawing you have to do in there. Um, you know, this is going to prove that I work in animation, because these are like incredible drawings, <laughs> right? And then you could basically, you take them, and then you just kind of put them in whatever perspective or whatever shape you need them to be in. Gotcha. You know, and and that's how it would work. The 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 basic part of it, um, but any anything where you're drawing, you'd basically always start off with a rough drawing. Um, whoops, with a rough drawing, and then you would you would draw over that for a clean line. There we go. I'm getting hang of it a little bit here. I just use Photoshop because uh, I, I use that literally every day. Mm -hmm. okay. so. But yeah, you could you could see the idea. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, that's so, so I guess like once you finish like an outline. You're going to yeah. export that into what program? Yeah. Um, you know, for the most part, things always eventually find their way into Photoshop. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, let's say if you are going to color it, um, which I would say a lot of the stuff ends up getting colored. Right. Um, yeah, whether it's Photoshop or, or Clip Studio Pro or what have you. Um, I'm just going to do this, doodle this really fast here. Um, so then we could erase, yeah, erase with quotation marks there, uh, get rid of the sketch, the underlying sketch, mm. and then the color would be done on a, on a different layer again underneath it. Uh, you know, I'm just looking, it's pretty much the same. Um, yeah, it looks as, very, very, yeah. It's Photoshop. Photoshop, yeah, with the brush size. Yep. I think yeah. the amount of paint is pretty interesting as this yeah. separate from the density. 
kind of thing. Yeah, well, this is this is, would be the same exact issue in, in Photoshop. Mm. You know, it's just basically the size. I'm just choosing to use a really big brush here. Right. So I could get it down faster. But um, but this would be exactly like in Photoshop. Actually, in Photoshop, I'd probably do something like this, where I would make a big selection and then fill it, which is what I should have done, because that would make it a lot faster. <laughs> um, the eraser here. Oops, things a little bit different. Um, but yeah, actually, let me go do that. So you do use the lasso brush. Comic book colors use the lasso. So I, I was amazed to find out that one of my favorite artists colored. Uh, you know, I thought he was. I was like trying to find out what brush he used, but he used basically a um, a mouse. Um, a mouse, and he would just make selections like that with the lasso. Uh, Pretty interesting. Yeah, he would just do that. And um, you do that, and you can just, it's much faster to work with the lassos like this, as you can see. Uh, now, I'm just enjoying watching you do this. It's pretty fascinating. <laughs> Yeah, when I remember when uh, I was taught, basically, and I, I learned it, I would go to um, comic book conventions, and uh, there was some, there was, you know what, I'll, I'll name call him, he's not going to remember me anyway. Uh, there was an artist named Phil Noto, and Phil was one of the nicest people I've ever met, and uh, I would bring my laptop at the time and uh, ask him, you know, can you just show me kind of like what you guys do, because I don't even have the slightest idea. Um, and he's showed me a lot of the stuff. Uh, again, it was uh, it was using Photoshop, so I'm a little bit lost here trying to figure it. Out. Okay, right. So then I would take, I would deselect all the red, so that it selects all the blue area that I'm going to make blue. No, and then I could just fill it in blue. I mean, that's a really hideous blue, but yeah, you, know, you get the basic idea. Yeah. Um, and then from there, this is how they do it in com in comic books, really. Um, in animation, I mean, a lot of guys, from what I've seen, they kind of, uh, they would probably set up initial base colors just like this, and then just, um, I say it, it's actually the same um, in comics, where they have that, and then there's ways to make, they'll select all their red areas, and what's interesting is that a lot of these, there's a lot of the shortcuts are the same uh, between this and Photoshop but they're not all the same. So like right now I'm trying to hide these, uh, I don't know if they, they show on your screen, these little dots. Yeah, um, no, I see them. Okay, yeah, so I'm like trying to hide them and I know in Photoshop it's control H, but here it's not, I thought it was. <laughs> um, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so now if I wanted to do like the um, shading for it, there's so many different ways to do this. There's so many different ways. One way is basically just select the same color, create a new layer on top, um, set that to multiply. Yeah, I can fix that right now. So normally it would just, I would set this layer to multiply and then as I color it, it would just automatically come out darker, but mm -hmm. that's not happening because I'm not using Photoshop for some reason. <laughs> but um, so, all right, that's weird. I'm not, I don't care. There we go. Okay. So I'm just gonna, this is what I was hoping for. Okay, yeah, and that'll do it. That'll keep... So now that I have it kind of selected like this, it'll keep me from painting outside of the shape. Gotcha. All right, so you'll see. So I'm just kind of pretending as if the light's coming from below. Uh, get a nice dramatic shadow going like this. So yeah, I I've, I've thought I started mentioning to you before the actual interview that I've been considering doing like a, a live Facebook thing. Right. Uh, where, where I just do some of this kind of drawing to A, to, to show some people that, that have asked me about, you know, how I do my process, like, like you know, like yourself here. Um, and B, honestly, like in the, uh, 
the main reason is to kind of just connect with my old friends um, and uh, just kind of BS while, while I draw, uh, while I get some work done you know, I, or whatever I'm allowed to kind of show live. Right. Um, or just to kind of shoot the shit while I draw. Yeah, you should um, check out other streaming sites. I mean, Facebook Live is great. Definitely. So it's like Instagram. Yeah, Live, yeah. But, um, if you get like a Twitch stream set up, right, it's right. like a lot more uh, customizable, like right, right. OBS and stuff like that. Like um, I've seen, I've seen Jim Jim Lee, who is one of the publishers of DC Comics and uh, comic book icon. Mm -hmm. um, he has a stream on Twitch that that I I kind of plug into every now and then. Um, yeah, and I think it's great. I think it's great. But um, sure. the last section that I just wanted to talk about was the community sure. aspect of. Um, visual artists and i think i think i just wanted to touch upon like if you could talk a little bit about like the online communities that you might be a part of or i know you mentioned before that you went to comic book conventions just mm -hmm. to either learn or right. to market or to connect if you just yep on that yeah um well online communities uh probably you know besides the way back uh, the myspace thing and then facebook and that's weird because I remember when when friends would tell me to create a Facebook account, or especially with the with the MySpace when that was a thing back then. Mm. Um, I was always kind of like, well, why? Why? What am I going to do? Why, why am I going to make a? What, what do you do with this Facebook thing? What do you do with with MySpace? What What do you do with it? Oh, you just con connect with people. I was like, I you know I connect with the people I need to connect with right here, <laughs> yeah, right here in the office. I, I don't need to they're like, yeah, friend me on Facebook, but we're friends here, man. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. What do you want from me? Um, but in particular with Facebook, yeah, MySpace was just a mess. Um, <laughs> I, I couldn't look at anybody's pages. It was just like just this hodge visual assault. Um, right. But with Facebook, it was all much more streamlined. And with Facebook, I, I understood pretty quickly once I was able to, to hook up with old friends from high school, um, I started to get it immediately just with that. Um, so, but in terms of actual artwork itself, I mean, the first big one that I was aware of, uh, and and because I'm so old, uh, it, I'm slow to adapt to a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. um, but it was it was called it was Deviant Art. Deviant oh, Art. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So they there's like the first big one, and uh, and I've lost days just staring at other artists. <laughs> no, absolutely. Deviant yeah. Art. Um, and I think it's a fantastic thing. I mean, since then, there's probably other stuff. This Art Station. Um, obviously there's, there's Instagram, there's Twitter, there's, there was, a what was it? Not, not Tumblr. I can't remember the other one, but it doesn't matter anymore because it, it's hardly used, but, um, uh, you know, I'll, you know, I don't get the whole thing with Instagram. I'll be honest. Um, I think it's definitely more of a photographer's thing, but most artists I, I know have, um, Instagram accounts and, and they, they post there quite often. But just with the fact that I am that there's the limitation of the uh, the ratio you kind of have to work with, um, right. and how it how it really crops your artwork or your pictures. Sometimes I, I personally hate it, and the fact that for the most part, if you you look at it on a on a computer screen, it's real it's fairly small. The images you can't zoom in, and if you look at them on your phone, I mean it. You know, I'll look at artwork on my phone, you know, like anybody, but. It's, um, you know, I want to be able to zoom in personally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what I love about DeviantArt and, and ArtStation. You know, you could, you could download the art and, and most of the artists will put a high resolution version where you can really look in there and you can see the textures they create. Um, so I, I definitely prefer those. So anyway, uh, DeviantArt was the first big one that I was aware of and the main one. Um, Instagram came way later for me and I was a little slow to get into it because I was just like, I, it's so limited. This I'm so limited with stuff I can do. Like I can't upload from my desktop to Instagram. Right. I, I have to upload from my desktop to my phone, then to Instagram. <laughs> and yeah. you know, no, it is a, definitely annoying. I'm not a fan of Instagram. Um, now I know that there's uh, you know, a lot of people put stuff up on Twitter also. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've been slow to adapt with a lot of that stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm starting to post more up on Twitter. Um, but, uh, I hardly use my account, uh, up, up to now I've hardly ever used it. So I'm, I'm, I'm using it a little bit more and more. Um, and for the most part, um, over the past several years to 10 years or so, I've just been posting artwork up on, um, on Facebook. 
Um, but it, it, establishing yourself. So again, I, I'm, I'm not a great person uh, to ask in terms of how to establish yourself digitally. I'll be coming to you for that probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, all, all the most successful guys I know, they post on everything. They'll post on, on Twitter, on Instagram, um, on uh, uh DeviantArt, uh, although it seems like they fewer of them have been using DeviantArt, but that's probably because the, the platform, the Twitter platform and Facebook and um, Instagram are just so large. Um, but I, my understanding is that hashtags play are, are important. Oh, um, absolutely. Getting yeah. Work scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, which ones uh, that is up for discussion. Uh, again, that's something I'm going to be asking around a lot. <laughs> you know, I was about myself. to say, if you ever have questions about that, I can give you a whole. Room. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> you know, basically, what my friend just said, he's like, "Yeah, I just do a lot of hashtags." And I'm like, "God, <laughs> don't you just like, you know, it isn't your your it just comment looks messy. section?" Yeah, yeah, it's really messy. It's <laughs> really, really messy. I mean, I see it. I'm like, "Oh my god!" But but in terms, I guess, of getting your your work initially seen, it's really mm. important um, because I've seen, and not to knock some of the other artists, but I've seen artists that. Uh, have like a, a million views, a, a million followers, um, or hundreds of thousands of followers, and I may not, it may not be my cup of tea, really. Right. Um, and I, and I kind of quite like, how the hell does this person have so many followers? <laughs> yeah. uh, how does that work? Um, but I understand I, it's their understanding of how to use social media itself. Right. Um, and, and not Google, necessarily the art. That's right. It's not necessarily it. art. Yeah. 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 And kudos to them, you know, for figuring that stuff out. Um, so you would definitely know more about that, the social media aspect of it than, than I would at this point. Um, but, uh, you know, all the guys I know personally that are in the business, it, it's, it's the usual suspects. It's, it's the Twitters, the Instagrams, the, um, uh, there's another, there's the third one around there somewhere that I just can't, oh, Facebook. Right. Um, it, it's those three big Goliaths right there. Uh, the other art station I've mentioned when I visited art station, I mean, it seems to me that that's where a lot of, in, in particular gaming professionals and movie professionals post their, their artwork. These are guys that are very well established, um, have tons of work and I see their stuff on there uh, more easily than I do on things like Instagram, et cetera. Um, why that is, I mean, it's, it seems it's a really good platform art station. Mm. Um, I do like a lot of the options it has, but I don't know how it got started in terms of so many industry people post there as opposed to, to some of these other things. So maybe they do all of them. They, pr they probably do if they're smart. Um, but if I ever really want to look around at, and when I say industry, I'm talking like guys like matte painters, um, that'll do the matte painting for for movies and for video games concept artists mm. uh they all if i want to really look into a lot of them I'll, I'll go into art station and just kind of uh find them by tangent you know go find one artist and then he'll he'll see who he's following and and you know go from there um but that that's the those are the big the big ones in terms of social media um like I said, I'm, I'm an old man <laughs> at this point. And, and, uh, you know, you youngsters have definitely got a leg up on me with, with this. <laughs> so I, I have to, I have to do my research on that in particular. Great. All right. So that's like pretty much all my questions. Uh, cool. if, I guess if you could just stop sharing your screen just so I can. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sure, sorry. And now oh, you're fine. Yeah, uh, there we go. Yeah. But that's like pretty good. So I just wanted to thank you for coming on. And, uh, being interviewed yeah no i really enjoyed talking about the whole visual art field and um my I pleasure I, man i you know i love talking talking art anytime oh, anytime yeah. anytime all right and um everybody can just check uh back probably within the next couple of weeks i'll probably have another episode out and right, um cool. if you just want to plug your uh instagram twitter whatever you want as well sure. i'll throw that button on the screen as well sure uh, my instagram account is jn comics underscore art um uh and uh twitter is just uh, i believe it's just jn comics so you could just do a search for either one of those perfect um,